Hello everybody, welcome to Technoi Tanner. My name is Ken B and we're really glad you're here. So today's video is going to be a review and demonstration of the Orpho Laser One Portable Laser Engraver. Now, what you see on your screen now is the LU2 Dash 2 model of the Orpho Laser One. I purchased this unit on Amazon for the discounted price of $237.99. Now you can buy this unit directly from the manufacturer, but it's going to come on the slow boat from China and it'll take about a week to 15 days to get here. The LU2 Dash 2 comes with a 7 watt laser head, which happens to have the finest laser point of the three models that are offered. The other two laser heads offered are the LU2-4 20 watt short focus and the LU2-4 20 watt long focus with air nozzle assist. And FYI, if you plan on buying the long focus version, you're going to need to purchase a compressor. It does not come included with the product. Now, one of the features I want to point out to you today is that if you buy the 7 watt version, you can buy other laser heads from the manufacturer and the device will accommodate them. I happen to purchase the LU2-4 short focus and I will cover that separately in a future video. Speaking of future videos, have you hit that subscribe button yet? Oh, please do. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell and you will be alerted as soon as I upload my next video. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button. And don't forget to leave a comment, give me some feedback, or if you have some questions, or if you want me to try something out and make another video for you, all you got to do is let me know. So, the first thing you're going to need to know about this laser is that no software comes with it. You will have to purchase a software or use a free software that's available on the internet. The manufacturer recommends two different pieces of software. You can use one called Lightburn or another one called Laser GRBL. Lightburn must be purchased while Laser GRBL is open source and does not require a purchase, but they do accept donations, which helps continue future development of the product. I'll drop links for these downloads below in the in the description. Now as far as what you will see in this video, Lightburn is the one that I primarily use. It cost me $60, but they do allow you a 30-day trial period with no restrictions. As I demo this device in the video, you will see me using Lightburn. Please click on the info card here if you would like to see more how-to videos on Lightburn itself. Now, if you're new to laser engraving, it will take some time for you to learn the software. But don't worry, some good old-fashioned trial and error will work. There are also lots of videos for both softwares here on YouTube. All you got to do is punch in the name of the software and you'll be up and running in no time. Let's talk about what you get with your purchase. First off, you get the machine. You also get a pair of laser goggles, a power adapter to power the unit, a USB cable to connect it to your computer, a hex wrench, a brush mostly used for dusting off debris and things of that nature after the laser is done with your project, four angle fasteners. However, it does not come with any bolts to attach these angle fasteners to the base. I happen to have some number eight hex and uh, hex screws small short hex screws with some bolts that i had on hand they worked out just fine it also comes with a two millimeter allen wrench two cable ties an acrylic plate for testing four or five pieces of birch wood about the size of a credit card anodized aluminum plate that's supposed to be used for adjusting the focus but it's really a big cylinder i don't know why they say it's a plate it also comes with a focus gauge with a thumb screw so that you can lower and raise the laser head uh, while you're trying to get the laser focused on the material now, while the laser does come with an attachable eye guard on the laser head itself and a pair of eye goggles i wanted to allow my family to come in and watch and not worried about their safety so i purchased some additional goggles to keep them safe now i also keep a fire extinguisher nearby i highly suggest researching and reading about the recommended safety precautions that you should take while working with a laser engraver. This is a class four laser. This is not 
the laser pointer that you play with your cat. This is not lasers that project up on the wall for your kids to pretend that are stars. This is a high-powered laser that will burn the surface of just about anything it touches at certain power levels. Please do not leave this unit unattended while it's operating. For your own safety, you are my viewers and I care about you. I want you to be safe. One of the first things you will notice when you open up the box is that the unit is extremely well packed and easy to get out and super easy to assemble. Now the manufacturer has videos to on YouTube to walk you through putting this thing together. And depending on your comfort level, it may take you as little as 15 to 30 minutes to have the whole thing assembled and up and running. I recommend mounting it to something like a piece of plywood or a workbench. The whole unit is very very lightweight and as the laser head moves the base can wiggle especially as the laser head is set to higher speed so in order to reduce the impact to your project mount it to some plywood or to a workbench i also suggest putting the material depending on what it is down with some painter's tape it will help keep the material in place and protect the output and quality of your project the device has a 7 inch by 7 inch work area and one of the first things I did was marked off the laser's work area with some painter's tape. Later I used the laser itself to create a half inch grid, 7 inches by 7 inches in half inch increments, while I had painter's tape covering the plywood. After I got the lines cut in, I then went back over those lines in the painter's tape with some bright green paint and I covered the entire grid with that. It makes it super easy to see where everything is and it makes the placement of the material easier to do and line up with what you're working in light burn with. Since the unit is small in size and lightweight, it can be used just about anywhere and is lots of fun to use with the family on small projects. I've discovered that the number of passes and the speed in which you have your laser set to move really matters. Going slow allows more time for this 7 watt laser to do its job. I purchased the device to primarily use it on leather, and it does a good job. I've also used it on cardboard, wood, and metals like aluminum and steel. With a 7 watt laser, it did not engrave on most metals. However, the cool thing is, is that if you paint the metal or surface, it will do a really awesome job for you. Now, let's talk about ventilation. This is important for a couple of reasons. As the laser is engraving or cutting your material, it burns the material and this smoke needs to be fed into an exhaust system if it's used indoors. I have an over-the-counter 36-inch exhaust fan here, and I use some air dryer ducting to get it to go into a piece of plywood with an air dryer vent, and it blows it all outside. And if I need additional ventilation, I also happen to have a exhaust fan that's supposed to be used for plant enclosures, tent or otherwise, that does a great job and I can attach a hose to it and I can put the hose exactly where I need it to pull that air and take it right outside into my custom made little exhaust port. If you guys want to see what I used, I will go ahead and drop some links in the description below so that you can check those out. By the way, the overhead exhaust fan is really good for when I actually start to use my airbrush to do any kind of staining or painting great way to keep all of those fumes going outside so let's see this laser in action laser and leather almost sounds like a song i'm going to make a coaster using some scrap veg tan leather in the software i'll make a circle and if you've ever used any photo editing software you might see some similarities here in lightburn each object or group of objects has been given a layer of its own, and you can adjust the output settings for that layer. After I create the circle, I'm going to create some text in the font that I want, and then I'm going to 
import an image and use a feature in the software called trace. This allows me to do a vector rendering, I think is what I've heard it called. It's basically a simpler and easier way for it to kind of trace the outline of what I'm looking at in the image. And it's a lot easier for the engraver to give you a high quality output, especially if you're doing logos and things of that nature. Now, once I've got all of this set up in the software, I'm gonna go and do a preview. This will show me the path the laser will take throughout the entire process. It also tells me how long it's gonna to take to run the process, as you can see here. I can go into the software and make any additional adjustments to power and speed that I want. And now it's time to send it to the laser.
as you can see, it did a good job, and I'm happy with the result. Later, I'll probably clean up the edges and stain it and use it here in the office or maybe give it to a friend. Overall, I'm very happy with this purchase. So if you're thinking about getting this laser, I think you will be pleased too. Hey, don't leave yet. Before you go, if you want to see more videos like this or you want to follow up on what the 20 watt laser head does with this particular unit, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you'll be alerted the next time I upload my next video. I try to do one of these every other week, sometimes more often when things aren't busy. And if the video helped you, please leave a comment below and tell me, hit the like button, share. Thank you everybody for visiting Technoid Tanner and watching the video. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, did you hit that subscribe button yet?